Mark Ames joins the conversation, uh, author of The Exiled, also author of Going Postal. Uh, you, if the thing in your ear comes out, just put it back in. Okay. That's, uh, that's the least of our problems. Elliot Spitzer is also here, as is Jonathan Capehart. Uh, Mark, you talk about this as a textbook uh, case. Well, this is, in some ways, yes, in some ways, no. I mean, it, um, this wasn't an example of a disgruntled worker going into his workplace and shooting fellow employees. That is a new phenomenon that just started up in the mid-'80s, the middle Reaganism. But it's a, text, it's a textbook case in, in that this guy is, is a loser. And there are, you know, millions or tens of millions of people who are losers like him, lonely, as he said, he hadn't, you know, had sex in 20 sure. years, hadn't had a girlfriend in 30 years. We have this idea from Hollywood films that 99% of them about, you know, Revenge of the Nerds is funny, and the life of a nerd is funny and cute, and they always wind up with the beautiful woman in the end. This guy's life was the real life of a nerd and a loner, and it's miserable and horrible, and, you know, you add to that the stress uh, that's going on today with the economy, and he wrote about this, about, you know, what's going on in his, what was going on in his company, the layoffs, um, the squeeze, and there's a guy who snapped finally, couldn't take it anymore. What have you found to be the new, because Elliot was asking when we talked about this an hour ago, whether there's more of this happening now or whether we just get more coverage of it because there's the internet and all the rest of this sort of thing. What is your view on the frequency and, what, and, and if, it, if, there, if there is more of it, why? Uh, well, I think there is more of it, certainly, since uh, the crash last fall. Um, <clears throat> more of what? More of these, uh, I would say, economically inspired massacres. Um, because, you know, the difference between a killer like this and, your, and a serial killer, for example, is that you can't profile guys like this. They have no history of violence. They weren't torturing kittens. You know, they're not molesting children and so on. They just, they are normal people from our, by our standard. But what you've also seen since the crisis is, an, is, a real, is a new type of, let's say, going postal shooting where, uh, where somebody who's laid off or his, his squeeze is so much he can't take anymore, he not only kills himself but his whole family. That's something that we haven't seen. You know, you've seen these, these sort of family massacres. That just started, actually, this year from people who've been laid off. Yeah, well, it's interesting, and again, I don't know, you're talking about a particular subset of crime where people go into a workplace and, and, and wreak revenge and, and, and vent their anger. I think overall, even though people had said economies crash and crime will go up, just the opposite is happening. Murder rates are way down. And no, this is a phenomenon that people can't quite get their arms around. They're trying to figure out why this is happening. Major urban murder rates are coming down quite significantly, based on the data that I've seen that's been reported in the mass media, and people are trying to say, why is this correlation that we presume, positive correlation between declining economy and crime going up, breaking down this time? And so maybe this is, you're talking about a subset, but overall, it's not happening. Exactly. That, that's right. It is a subset. I mean, uh, workplace violence, you know, these kind of murders where a disgruntled employee goes in and shoots a supervisor, sure. they're a very small subset of overall workplace violence, but right. they shock us because... They, they remind us that actually our fellow employee might kill us because he might be, you know, getting bullied or, right. or whatever, yeah. It, it, it's interesting, though. I, you know, we'll, we'll come back for this. Uh, but you make great points, which is that there's more to be learned about the fact that as the economy suffers, crime isn't going up, which right. is the traditional interpretation of economy and crime. Right. At the same time, as the economy suffers, whether it's Michael Jackson's doctor underwater in his house looking to do whatever he has to do to, to be able to keep that house, or somebody else in a, in a pressure cooker type situation, there are more pressure cookers, but there's actually less crime on the streets. Well, less violent crime. I think yeah. we, ha we are now seeing, obviously, the financial crimes mm -hmm. that are outraging people, but it is less of the violent crime, the random violence, or even people who know each other shooting at each other, which is, you know, that, that, that is, it's really the random violence that terrifies people. Am I going to be walking down the street, some person whom I don't even know will shoot at me? Mm -hmm. That is what used to grip urban centers. Mm -hmm. You can't go out at night. Sure. These days, as the, the number of crimes among people who know each other is reasonably static, perhaps, random violence is way down, right. and that is what is making people feel safer in the cities. Yeah.